Hello, thanks very much indeed for joining us here on BBC World News. Nations have been reacting with alarm to President Trump's announcement that he's pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord that was signed by 195 countries in December 2015. The French president said Mr Trump had made a historic mistake. Japan's environment minister said the American president had turned his back on wisdom. For Donald Trump, though, this was about putting American jobs first, as Nick Bryant reports from Washington. The White House Rose Garden, the most fragrant of settings for what environmentalists will see as a toxic presidential decision. One that directly affects ecosystems all over the planet, from Donald Trump's back lawn to the mightiest of oceans and ice sheets. In order to fulfill my solemn duty to protect America and its citizens, the United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. He slammed this global agreement, a legacy of his predecessor, Barack Obama, claiming it gave China and other countries an unfair competitive advantage and penalized American workers. Thank you. From Thank its you. first word to its last, this was an America first address. This agreement is less about the climate and more about other countries gaining a financial advantage over the United States. The rest of the world applauded when we signed the Paris Agreement. They went wild. They were so happy. For the simple reason that it put our country, the United States of America, which we all love, at a very, very big economic disadvantage. At what point does America get demeaned? At what point do they start laughing at us as a country? We want fair treatment for its citizens, and we want fair treatment for our taxpayers. We don't want other leaders and other countries laughing at us anymore, and they won't be. They won't be. I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. For Donald Trump, it's all about the art of the deal. And he said he wants to negotiate a better one for America. But he didn't seem that worried if the rest of the world doesn't agree to one. In negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or in really entirely new transaction, on terms that are fair to the United States, its businesses, its workers, its people, its taxpayers. So we're getting out, but we will start to negotiate and we will see if we can make a deal that's fair. And if we can, that's great. And if we can't, that's fine. Climate change is an American problem too. Just visit Florida, a picturesque front line in the fight against global warming. Rising sea levels and recurring flooding risks turning Miami Beach into a modern-day Atlantis, a city submerged by water. Even on sunny days, it can get inundated because seasonal king tides bring the ocean to people's doorsteps. And further up the coast is Mar-a-Lago, the president's luxury estate. It's estimated that over the coming decades, a quarter of it could be underwater. Miami Beach is going to disappear. No wonder local residents such as Dan Kipnis are alarmed. Our so-called president thinks it's a hoax, it's a Chinese hoax. I mean, I can't believe it. I live right in the middle of climate change every day. We are so affected here. How dare the leader of this great country say it doesn't exist? Travel to the Midwest coal and rust belt and you get a very different view. Amongst many of Donald Trump's working class supporters, the Paris Agreement is seen as a killer of American jobs. But head further west to California, a state that's long set the pace on green issues in America, and you'll find a Democratic governor who's promised to conduct his own climate change negotiations with President Xi of China. President Trump has gone AWOL, absent without leave, and now it's up to Xi, and California will work with him and work with other countries uh, to do everything we can to offset uh, the negative pathway chosen by President Trump. This is a decision of enormous planetary and geopolitical significance. 
Critics will claim America has abdicated leadership on arguably the world's biggest problem, that America first means America alone. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Washington. There's going to be a lot of working out as to exactly what this means. European leaders are meeting the Chinese Premier, where they're expected to issue a joint statement supporting the Paris Agreement. Uh, we can speak now to our correspondent in Beijing, Stephen McDonnell. Uh, Steve, even before the announcement was made, there was a sense that the Chinese and the EU can see a new axis in a way, can't they? Absolutely. Beijing hasn't explicitly criticised Donald Trump for pulling the US out of the Paris climate deal, but just said, oh, well, you want out, we'll stand with Europe and other nations and push forward on these climate change measures. And if you want an indication of the types of changes that might be felt geopolitically, I mean, have a look at these local newspapers. There's Premier Lee, China's number two leader, with Angela Merkel. Here's another national English language daily. Very different images to Donald Trump at the NATO summit. And so the fallout from this geopolitically will be well beyond climate. And as you say, we're, we're seeing China, the EU, uh, other countries, I suppose, Australia, lots of other countries banding together and the US sort of out on its own now on climate change. I mean, it, it's clear, isn't it, that as far as China is concerned, whether Trump's in or out doesn't really matter, that the, the die is cast as to their view of going green for very good reasons with uh, air pollution, etc. But from a, a sort of diplomatic, global perspective, they must be smiling about this. This, this puts them in the moral vanguard, if you like, on a critical issue. Yeah, well, absolutely. China faces the problems of pollution day in, day out. Even if there was no climate change problem, there'd still be a problem with air pollution. And so the Chinese Communist Party has decided that something has to be done. It's officially declared that it believes there is climate change, that climate change is also man-made. And so it stands by Europe. And we are seeing a sort of new order developing and it's going to be interesting to to see how it all pans out in terms of you know, you know economically as well as politically but interestingly I think we're likely to see beyond the US government I mean California which is by itself the size of one of the top 10 countries in the world cutting its own deals with China exchanging information and you know all, all um, manner of technological support in terms of all the new climate change measures given the huge rollout of renewable energy that we're seeing in China at the moment Steve thanks very much indeed the latest there from Beijing well, as we said, it was much easier to find critical reaction to Donald Trump's move than praise, certainly around the world. In Paris itself, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, said that America had simply turned its back on the world. Nous ne renégocierons pas un accord moins... Under no circumstances will we renegotiate a less ambitious agreement. France is calling on all countries who are signatories to remain within the Paris Agreement to be worthy of our responsibilities and to give nothing up. To all the scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, responsible citizens who were disappointed by the United States President's decision, I want to say this. You will find a second home in France. I'm calling on you. Come and work here with us. Work on concrete solutions for the climate. Tonight the United States has turned its back on the world, but France will not turn its back on the Americans. Uh, there's jobs in that decision, you see. Let's go from Paris to Brussels now. Damien Grammaticus, our Europe correspondent, joins us. And, and in a way, how timely, Damien, that the, the Chinese and the EU have a summit in which they can promote what they're going to do. Yeah, so this is totally sort of coincidental. This was a long scheduled summit. It's an annual thing that happens between the UK, between the EU and China, and it's scheduled to happen here today uh, and of course as you say this provides a an opportunity for these two other global heavyweights to signal that they are on a completely different page to Donald Trump uh, and we will see from them today a joint commitment to stand by the Paris Agreement they say it's a historic achievement uh, one that must be preserved uh, and not only will they say that they will commit they say to maintaining the practical 
in the practical provisions of the Paris Agreement, so committing to money, committing to the cuts under that, because, they say, they see this uh, as irreversible and they want to signal to all the other signatories, the 190-odd other countries uh, that have signed up to this, that this will not unravel. There's a reality here, though, isn't there? If the US pull out, they pull out any funding they might be prepared to, uh, to put in as well for developing countries, part of the bedrock of this deal, I suppose. The EU and China, are they the ones to turn to for more money? Well, interestingly, uh, they, the talk has been that in the announcement or in the declaration that we made here today by the uh, Chinese Premier and the EU leaders will be that they wish to, they wish to continue, uh, see that funding continue. So all that money that would go to projects in, uh, in developing countries, they're saying that that's, that should still happen. Uh, of course, as you say, difficult without the major contributor, the US. But I think the, what they, they do want to signal here is that they believe both for climate reasons and for economic reasons, this is extremely important because the, they say the transition towards a low carbon economy uh, is a historic shift that's happening right now. It's one that brings both benefits, both uh, environmentally and economically, uh, and it positions these economies in Europe and China uh, and elsewhere for the future. It, gi it gives them a lead in technologies that will be important in the future, not tying them into old and dying technologies, and that's what they want to focus on. Damien, thank you very much indeed. The latest there from Brussels. be very interesting to hear what comes out of Brussels uh, from the Chinese and the EU uh, during the day. Aren't they? Right now, we're going to get some more on the ramifications of Donald Trump's announcement. On Monday, in fact, the UN is to hold its first ocean conference, looking at improved international cooperation for tackling the challenges of global warming in the sea. Well, I'm joined from Bergen in Norway by Professor Peter Hogan, who is the president of the UN's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. Uh, Peter, thanks very much for joining us. Just first of all, your response to President uh, Trump's decision. Well, I think it has ramifications for the U.S. and, and the U.S. role in, in the world affairs of climate and oceans. Uh, for my uh, pr primary in interest in the oceans, I think it will not change the U.S. strong position in ocean research and activities in the years to come. Oh. There are many reasons why they should continue with that. Yeah, well, let, tell me, what are the reasons? Because most people would think this is a big step back from the U.S. of all people in terms of interest in, in tackling global warming. Well, but U.S. efforts have been, been instrumental in, in doc documenting actually global warming and also the other CO2 problem in the ocean acidification over the years. And uh, so if, if you don't believe in that, you may need to, to measure even more. But then that there are lots of other reasons for investing in the ocean research and, and, and investigations. Uh, if you're into uh, looking at the, the, the variability of uh, hurricanes, for example, I mean, if, if you don't believe they're going to change in intensity and, and, and frequency, still you would be interested in predicting them better, and then you need ocean observations and systems to, to deal with those. Right, so this is interesting. We've just been looking at pictures of, of, uh, of the ocean, of the seabed, of the damage caused by uh, acidification, as you call it, a lack of oxygen. In fact, now we're seeing uh, you've got a process of, I think you call them argos, don't you, of, of gauging the, the temperature of the ocean. It, Obviously, all the time you're looking to improve your knowledge, but how, how far behind are you scientifically in knowing exactly what's going on in our oceans? Well, you know, it's still the fact that we know the surface of the moon better than the bottom of the ocean, and I think uh, we have now sustainable development goals looking ahead to 2030, and by then we should at least know the ocean better than we know some of the planets in, in, the, in the system. So, so there, there are issues with resources out there, biological resources, maybe medical uh, things we can solve, uh, minerals. There are many things we don't know on how to deal with, uh, with, the, with the fish resources and, and the ecosystems. Uh, there's just a, a, so much values in the ocean that we don't explore in the, and, and utilize in the proper way because we simply don't know how it works, how it's there. A lot of work still to be done. Peter Hogan, thank you very much indeed for that. The first UN Ocean Conference taking place at the start of next week. OK, let me remind you of what has been our top story, and that is that countries across the world have expressed, well, regret, dismay at President Trump's decision to pull out of the Paris Accord on climate change. The French President Emmanuel Macron said there was no plan B 
for combating global warming. The EU and China are expected to reaffirm their commitment to the deal at a summit in Brussels in the hours ahead.